It is a global issue. And I think inevitably, we are going to see more and more exotic species showing up. By definition, exotic species don't belong here. Often, they displace the plants and animals that do. For the U.S. economy, we spend over $100 billion a year just trying to control the impact of exotic species. San Felipe Creek in Del Rio is fed by some of the largest springs in the state. And it has an equally large problem. The creek is being invaded by a South American catfish. The sucker mouth catfish have really taken over. What's going on your salad? Cabbage, some zucchini, cucumbers. These biologists haven't come here to eat. Pressed algae and fish meal and luckily, a few other things. The food is for the fish. Whew, they stink. This exotic salad bar. The algal pellets and spinach. Is being tested as fish bait to trap and remove the exotic fish. That's good. We got it on the bottom. It's set good here. This population basically went exponential. Literally hundreds of thousands of fish here. More than any other fish in this creek. Maybe more than all the other fish put together. You have to lift over these rocks a little bit. This has biologists concerned for the entire ecosystem. We've seen a lot of the native species decline. He doesn't bite. They're obviously being hurt by this fish. It looks kind of scary. They're a common aquarium fish. They're algae eaters, which is the base of the food chain. You see, this fish didn't get here by itself. Like so many problems with exotic species, this one likely began with some well-intentioned people. They raise these fish in their aquariums. They become very attached to them but they just don't understand when you put this thing that's in your aquarium into our natural environment, you're harming a lot of other things. Few have a better window on the threats of exotic aquatic organisms than the aquarium staff at the Houston Zoo. We want to be able to provide an educational message to the public and also to protect our native resources. We need to have that public buy-in. and Then the state doesn't have to worry about invasive species being dumped into the waterways. These are red piranha, also known as red belly piranha. One exhibit always draws a crowd. Oh, he got it. Especially at feeding time. They are illegal to own down here in Texas. Perhaps the scariest thing about these fish is that they came from the pet trade. These ones were actually uh, confiscated. In fact, the aquarium houses all sorts of exotic creatures intercepted by law enforcement. We can take those animals in and then turn that into an educational message. Piranhas, freshwater stingrays, uh, the stonefish. Animals that are not native have the potential to outcompete on native wildlife. And so we would not want them to get established here in the state of Texas. Uh... From global shipping, the pet trade, aquaculture, or the live seafood market, non-native species can be introduced and away from natural predators can invade. Voracious Asian snakeheads have appeared in eastern waters. Zebra mussels encrust the Great Lakes and Mississippi Basin. And mitten crabs, which can carry a dangerous parasite, have invaded the west coast and elsewhere. Estimates of exotic plants and animals in the U.S. exceed 50,000 species, and the problem is worldwide. It is global. Other countries are working to stem the tide of exotics coming into their countries, just like here in the United States. While Lance Robinson didn't write the book on invasive species, he keeps well informed about them to safeguard fishing on the Texas coast. Fisheries are an economic value to our state in the billions of dollars. Here's a red fish. We monitor everything that we collect in our sample gear, looking to see if there are exotics showing up. But we can always use the public as they encounter something, letting us know what they have found. Let's see any over here. There's two more here. Our work kind of goes at a snail's pace. They had just recently become a problem 
Everyone was kind of in a panic. They didn't really know what to do with them or what they were. Is that eight? While a student at Southwestern University, Rebecca Marford became curious about an exotic snail being seen in the bayous of suburban Houston. A what? A tie? These snails are exotic, invasive species, meaning that they don't belong here and they spread, which is sort of a double whammy. It's not a, not a good thing for the environment. Let's see what we can find. Let's go left. One student's curiosity has led to years of research projects for Professor Romy Burke's biology classes. Whoa, snail. Got one. Oh, got it. It's a big one. So we'll take this one back to the lab. They're called apple snails because they're about the size of an apple. Oh, nice one. There's very little information in the scientific literature about this species. And so the class is collecting adult apple snails. Another one. And their large pink egg clusters to learn more about these creatures and the threats they may pose. We've seen egg clutches as many as four or 5,000 eggs almost. That's a lot of snails from just one. Good catch, Becca. It's a big egg clutch. Make an omelet. <laughs> Hot pink omelet. The ones that we're studying in Solarum actually eat plants. They're gaining attention as a possible threat to Texas wild rice as well as agricultural rice. It's 39.30. So we're going to do some experiments where we look at whether adult snails, fish, or crayfish would eat the eggs. It's very important to understand how many of those eggs actually end up as snails later on. Ultimately, research done by these students may be the key to keeping these invasive snails from being a major threat, <laughs> economically or ecologically. We know a lot more now than we just did six months ago. I still remain worried. They're not going to go away. There's a limited questions from a research and even teaching standpoint with students that I don't think I'll ever be bored. Straight row. Straight out. Back at San Felipe Springs, That'd be the good. baited traps have had 24 hours to catch sucker mouth catfish. Not just loaded, but it's um, Four, five, six, seven. The seven. biologist learned what worked. Algal pellets. 11, 12, 14. And what didn't? A diamondback water snake. Hmm. That's too bad. Adjustments will be made to better target the fish. There you are but there is some hopeful news. We caught about 45. Uh, some baits actually do work better than others. Once we get the methods resolved, then we'll really go after this population. Each exotic has its own suite of problems and its own set of challenges it presents us to try and control them. Plants and animals that don't belong here can threaten those that do. It's an important issue that we all have to be aware of. It's not going away. In the ongoing battle against exotic aquatic species, awareness is our best defense. I think education has got to be at the front to stem the tide of exotic species introductions. But persistence is our best hope. The easiest thing to do is just give up. We're going to keep pounding away at this one until either we get it resolved or we are assured there's absolutely nothing we can do. Hopefully it'll be the former and not the latter.